Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about some Cinderella's possibly in the Big 12. I talked about UCF and Texas Tech, two teams that I think could make some real big noise this upcoming year. But let's get into Wednesday What Ifs, kind of a new segment around here. I want to break down some different What Ifs from the past, the present, the future, about players, about coaches, about teams, whatever you want. Definitely submit anything you want in the comments here that I'll break down following weeks in the in the next coming weeks here. But Let's start to break this down, and the first what if I have is about Joe Burrow, and my question here is, what if he never broke his hand in 2017? I know this is a very, very ineffectual thing to be talking about, but it has huge wide-ranging effects where there is a hypothetical world where Joe Burrow is their starter in 2018. He was in a battle with Dwayne Haskins for that backup spot in 2017 and then broke his hand. They were going to be the backup to JT Barrett, and they ended up being. Um, But it ended up being Dwayne Haskins instead of Joe Burrow. Because of that broken hand, it kept him out of being able to throw for quite a long time. Dwayne Haskins took that leap, um, was the backup that year, and then took over in 2018 and absolutely lit the world on fire and did incredible things. Um, So... It would be really interesting, right, if Joe Burrow never broken his hand, he was the backup for JT Barrett and got into some more games in 2017, and then in 2018 was the starter for Ohio State, he never finds his way to LSU, and he never has that record-breaking season in 2019. Now, that doesn't mean he wasn't going to be a top draft pick and wasn't going to do incredible things at the college level, but it does mean it wasn't going to be an LSU uniform, and that would have been really fascinating to watch. I think when we think about uh, Joe Burrow and what he did in college football, we always think about LSU. Uh, I think forever, we're going to think about that guy right there. We're going to think about the guy that led LSU to one of the most remarkable seasons that I've ever seen, probably one of the most remarkable seasons that a lot of you have ever seen in this sport. So definitely a really, really interesting hypothetical where maybe Joe Burrow is a Ohio State legend and only Ohio State legend. I know there's a little bit of a fight between those fan bases about which one he actually identifies with, which one he actually is. I tend to think it's both. I I don't think there needs to be some type of battle over a quarterback. But at the end of the day, when we think about Joe Burrow, that's probably not the guy that you're thinking of. You're thinking of the LSU guy. You're thinking of the Bengals guy at this point. But it would be fascinating if he never broke that hand, if he maybe was never uh, the third string in that 2017 year. He was the backup was the starter in 2018, and then Dwayne Haskins, you know, the the incredible player that he was, the um, incredible season that he had might have been just a season later or might have been for a different team. So a ton of different wide-ranging effects. Maybe he's still at the same spot. Maybe he's still a top quarterback drafted. Maybe he's still the starting quarterback for one of these top teams, but he would have been Ohio State quarterback for at least his time in college football, and it would have been fascinating to see that unfold. But one of the other interesting things that I wanted to break down is kind of a what if that is unfolding kind of before our eyes. What if Jim Harbaugh never left for the NFL? I think that's a very interesting conversation that probably a lot of you have had throughout the season where we were likely expecting him to walk off to the NFL at some point. The Connor Stallions case, recruiting violations, all that stuff kind of pushed him in that direction. But there was a reality where he found his way back to Michigan. And that would have been a very interesting one. You know, you're coming off a national title. We talked about what Sharon Moore is dealing with. I can only imagine what this program would be dealing with if Jim Harbaugh was still there. There would still be a ton of conversation around Connor Stallions and around the recruiting violations and all of that stuff. There would be a ton of more eyes and kind of rooting on the downfall of Michigan in a lot of ways. So this would be fascinating to watch. I think Harbaugh would be the talk of the country. You wouldn't be talking about Ohio State or Georgia or Texas or Oregon. You'd be talking about him because He'd done something that he'd kind of been building up for in quite some time. You know, he had a couple of years at Michigan where it looked like he might not be the coach at Michigan going forward, but he was able to battle through, win a national title, get to that top level, and then he walked away. Um, But if he hadn't walked away, this Michigan team would be the talk of college football. I have no doubts about that. There would be plenty of free Harbaugh signs around Ann Arbor, around the entire country. When we talk about kind of what would happen in the recruiting violations and the Connor Stallions one especially would be a huge topic of conversation. And I think on top of all of that, the staff would be essentially the same. There wouldn't be this big time turnover to talk about, at least from a staff perspective, there still would be that for the roster. But It would be interesting to see kind of how this would develop and how this team would feel going into the season. I think there would be definitely a little bit more confidence, although I don't think they lost much when Sharon Moore took over. But I do think it would be a very interesting conversation off the field where you're probably going to have a very 
good team regardless. But off the field, there was going to be a lot of conversation around Michigan and, you know, what that season meant and is there an asterisk next to it because of uh, Connor Stallions. And there would be a lot of conversations that would happen that I think would be very interesting, at least to see unfold. I, it would definitely be not necessarily talking about football too much, more talking about the outside world, but it would be fascinating to see that unfold. Definitely something that I'm definitely watching going forward. But the final one I have for you is, what if Oregon or Ole Miss wins the national title? Uh, I know that sounds not that far-fetched. Both these teams have the ability to do that, but this one is going to be really, really fun to watch because it not only has you know effects of who's the next big-time coach, where I don't know if anyone else has this feeling, but I have this feeling that whoever wins the national title this upcoming year, that head coach is the number two coach in the, in the country. I think Dabo Sweeney right now I would put at number two, but I have big-time questions about what he's doing right this second at Clemson. And I think whether it's Lane Kiffin or Dan Lanning or maybe it's Steve Sarkeesian or maybe it's Kalen DeBoer over at Alabama, whoever that is, Whoever wins the title or maybe loses to Georgia in the national title, maybe it's Ohio State and Ryan Day, it feels like that guy's going to be the number two head coach in the country. And it feels like that team is going to be looked at as the next big time team in the country. So whether it's, you know, Oregon or it's Ole Miss, it, one of these teams is going to be able to make some noise. And if they do, it would flip everything on its head from the powers that be in those conferences where Ohio State and Michigan would have to watch a team that just walked into the conference walk right past them to a, uh, to a conference title and a national title. And then you have the SEC, Ole Miss having passed up Bama and Georgia in one offseason with a massive transfer portal class. It would start some conversations, and I think the roster construction would be very interesting thing to watch going forward, where maybe they lean more into the portal. Maybe they do kind of the Ole Miss way of things where – you essentially just rebuild a side of the ball entirely on, in the portal where you add guys like Walter Nolan, Prince Leo Man Miel, and uh, Chris Paul Jr., a ton of really talented guys that came over. But if you can turn that into a national championship team, which, to be fair, people haven't been able to do in the past, but there's more chances this year than there ever have been. And these two teams are absolutely the ones that are setting the pace the most in that uh, category. And I think Dan Lanning could be you know, the second best head coach in the country and flip over the entire roster construction of college football. Now, I think Oregon's a little bit different from Ole Miss because they have been recruiting at such a high clip and have built uh, such a good foundation that the portal class is not necessarily as, you know, much of the team as uh, in Oregon as it is in Ole Miss. You know, Ole Miss added essentially everyone from the portal. They added so many big-time players. Now, Jackson Dart coming back is absolutely huge for them and uh, definitely not a position that they wanted to add from the portal. But it'll be fascinating to watch both these teams. I, I think when you look at both these teams, they have the ability to pull this off. They have the ability to win the conference, to go to the playoff, to win a national title. And if all that happens, a lot of dominoes start to fall in terms of how those conferences are constructed go, constructed going forward as you know how those head coaches are looked at in the world of college football and on top of all of that how roster construction maybe works going forward in college football so these are the two teams that I'm watching the closest going into this year where they can flip college football on its head not only on the field but off the field and it'll be fascinating to watch if they're able to do that so if you have the foundation if you have the ability to add a ton of players in the portal and not miss a step there's going to be teams that look that direction, including Georgia, Texas, Alabama, some of these teams that have been a little bit more not resistant to the portal, but haven't used it quite as much as some other entities out there like Ole Miss and Oregon. So it'll be fascinating to watch if both the, if either of these teams can, you know, make it to the playoff, make it to the national title. Maybe maybe they face off against each other, and then we have a big time conversation to be had. But at the end of the day, it's going to be really interesting to watch that unfold. I think when you talk about this year, there's tons of stuff that can happen both on the field that affects the on the field product, but also what happens with roster construction, what happens with these conferences going forward, media deals. There's a million things that will be affected, but roster construction to me is the biggest thing with these two teams. It'll be totally flipped on its head if both these teams, or one of these teams at least, can hoist that trophy at the end of the year. But 
as of right now, we are going to end it out for today. That'll do it for this edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, We are presented, obviously, by GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a ton to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show. Leave a positive review. It does make a huge difference. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all of the social pages for all of the content updates you could possibly need. We have incredible people doing really, really good work across every single sport you could possibly want, whether it's basketball, baseball, golf, hockey, women's sports. It does not matter. We definitely have you covered over here at GSMC. So definitely come on over and uh, take in everything that we have to offer for you. But thank you once again for listening, and I will see you guys tomorrow.